Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to my channel. Today we've got another monthly freezer meal prep and I have a lot of really easy, fast recipes. I also wanna mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I will be sharing a little bit more about that here after a while. So this month I was focused on easy and quick. We really needed some extra meals put into the freezer, but I didn't have a lot of time in my schedule this week to be doing a ton of prepping. So I decided I wanted to pretty much be able to finish it in two or three hours. So as you're gonna see, these meals are easily thrown together and they take the stress out of your week when you have something you can pull out of the freezer and you know you'll have dinner on the table. To start off with, I went ahead and put some chicken breast into my Dutch oven and put that on the stove. I put some salt and pepper, some cumin, and some chili powder, and then I just covered the chicken in water so that it would cook up. We will be making something with that here in a little while, so I just wanted to get that started. While that was cooking up, I pulled out these chicken thighs. I was also trying to be a little on the budget-friendly side, for this month. So I did use chicken thighs for a few recipes just because they are a lot cheaper than a lot of the other cuts of meat. And this recipe is a honey bourbon chicken recipe. It has soy sauce, it has honey, some ketchup, and salt and some garlic. I did put pepper in as well. I actually just kind of measured half of this little honey bear for the recipe and then used the other half to make a second bag of this recipe. That is one thing I really love doing. Also, I didn't have any bourbon on hand, so I used a little bit of rum, just kind of improvising. But I love to be able to double recipes as I'm making them because you already have all of the ingredients out, you might as well make two of the recipe, particularly if you know it's something your family's really going to enjoy. And I'm always trying to keep things clean in between. After that, I checked on my chicken, just stirring it around, making sure it was cooking evenly. I got this beautiful roast. I think this is one of the best looking roasts I've ever purchased. <laughs> and I put a little bit of avocado oil and some minced garlic together in a little cup and then I took my brush and brushed it over and just let the meat sit while I prepared the other ingredients. I did add some salt and pepper to it and you know how much I love using these little tiny sweet peppers in recipes. They're one of my favorite ingredients to incorporate. So I cut up an onion and just into some nice slices and then I went ahead and cut these little sweet peppers in half. I didn't go any smaller than that because I felt like if I was slow cooking the roast, they would probably get kind of mushy if I did small little slices, so I just cut them in half. And then my secret sauce, my secret ingredient for doing slow cook roast is to also add an entire stick of butter. So I just chopped it up and added it to the bag with the peppers and onions. And this one I will just be getting out of the bag after it's thawed, dumping it all into my pressure cooker and putting it on the slow cooker setting. So basically putting it in the crock pot for like eight hours and letting it all cook and all those flavors incorporate. And as usual, I am adding in a nice little dishes break here. Don't forget to stop in between things and clean so you don't have so much to clean at the end. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. I have personally been using Skillshare for years and I love the layout of their platform. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. 
Also, as a busy mom, another feature I love is every single class is broken into sections so I can watch small sections at a time and come back to it, making it possible for me to complete full classes. Skillshare's entire catalog of classes now offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. They have a huge variety of class topics, anything from creative writing to culinary skills, which of course may interest you since you are watching a cooking video. This is the class I'm currently watching. It is indoor gardening and how to grow houseplants, veggies, and herbs. I know that you all will love Skillshare as much as I do. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare to try out. All right, let's get back to cooking. So at this point, my chicken was done and I pulled it out and was going to let it cool on a plate while I was working on some other recipes because I'm going to need to shred this chicken up and I wanted to shred it with my hands, so obviously I wanted it to be a little cooler. I actually made this recipe last month and it was such a big hit in our house. We really, really loved it. And it is a lemon pepper recipe. You use real lemons and you dump the juice in, you add some pepper. And I also am really trying to use more herbs in my cooking. So I did chop up some parsley as well. I feel like having herbs and things just gives it that extra kick of fresh flavor. And this one is going to be such a great recipe to be grilling this summer as well, not just baking it in the oven like what I did this past month. So I added some salt and pepper and I tie in seasoning and some garlic powder and I don't do a lot of measurements, I just dump and go. And then I did also add in some avocado oil as well. And then just like the recipe before this, I am also doubling this one since I have all of the things out. And with doing this, I learned a little lesson. I did not realize how well sliced lemons freeze, but you can slice lemons and freeze them and they are pretty much the exact same um, texture whenever they come out. So I learned that <laughs> the last month when I made this recipe. So now I'm going to take a little coffee break and using this coffee break, I am going to announce that I am working on another coffee recipe video. You all loved the one I did the last time and so I've been having fun coming up with some new recipe ideas. I can't wait to share one in particular I've been making almost every single morning. So today I just made a nice little caramel latte. It was easy and simple and it was great to whip up while I was cooking. The next recipe is a teriyaki pork chop and you're gonna make some homemade teriyaki dressing. You're adding in some brown sugar. You could also do a keto brown sugar substitute if you wanna make it more low carb, a little less sugar. And then you add in some soy sauce and some garlic. And then you wanna add some chicken broth because pork needs moisture. And I've learned that along the way with cooking. When it comes to cooking pork, I used to really hate cooking pork because I felt like I couldn't make it tender enough, it was always chewy. So adding moisture is always helpful whenever you're cooking it. So now we're gonna go ahead and shred up that chicken that's been cooking throughout the prep and we are going to make some sour cream enchiladas. Per usual, I'm shredding my own cheese. I always like to say it melts so much better when you shred your own block of cheese instead of brying pre-shredded. Not that I don't ever, I just prefer to shred my own. And this recipe is very, very simple. However, I'm going to say if you're someone that really loves measurements, I'm sorry, this recipe does not have the best measurements. I usually kind of dump it all together and off we go. So basically I have a lot of shredded cheddar cheese and I do like to use the sharp cheddar cheese. And I do cook up the chicken, shred it up, and this time I did with my hands. I have done my blender before, but I felt like it kind of shredded it too much. So this time I shredded it up with my hands. I put a lot of sour cream in the bowl. I put the shredded cheese in the bowl and then I add green chilies. And I did do a little bit of cumin and chili powder as well to the mixture 
you mix it all up and then this time I did low carb wraps just because they are a little more keto friendly and I've been kind of trying to do a little more healthy options lately so that's the kind I grabbed and I also make these in the square pans because I just like the portion sizes better if you have a larger family then you may like to make it in 9 by 13 but I just made up enough that I could make about three pans of this and so I just divvy out all of the stuff I've made. I'm sorry for those of you that like measurements. <laughs> this part is probably hard for you to follow, but those that cook all the time, you probably can dig right into this recipe. So I just divvy out the insides onto all the tortillas I have, and then I oil the bottom of the pan because you're gonna have a lot of cheese melting and you don't want it to stick to everything. And then you roll up your tortillas and stick them right into the pan. All right, so for the topping, you saw a little clip there. I just added a little bit of milk to the sour cream just to kind of thin it out just a little. And then I think I added some chili powder to it as well. And then I just smear that all over the tops of them. And then you take the other half or whatever's left of your shredded cheese and you wanna to top it with that. After that, I just cover these with tin foil and I always get comments about using foil pans. And you know what? Sometimes as a mom, it's just nice to not have to wash one more pan. So that's why I like to use foil pans for some meals and it's just better than a bunch of takeout containers if you compare it to that. So my one daughter made a request this week and that was for me to make those corn dog bites. You know that I went through a phase probably about a year and a half ago of making them all the time and I haven't made them in a really long time. So I thought, you know what, she made the request and it is something really simple we can pull out for lunch. So basically all you do is mix up some cornbread and you can either make it from scratch, I've done both, I've made it from scratch, or you can make it um, out of a box and that's what I did this week because like I said, I was being super time sensitive in this prep and you can also make a good keto batter of cornbread. Just go on Pinterest and you'll find that. So these could even be keto friendly. And because I was trying to save time on washing dishes and all of that, I did put some parchment paper in the bottom of the pan. You just stick in a little bit of the cornbread mix. You take your cut hot dogs, you plunk them right in the middle and you bake it up to the instructions on the back of the cornbread. In this video, I'm adding a little bit of cleanup motivation. Let me know in the comments if you appreciate me throwing in a little bit of cleanup motivation after these meal preps. And I did just take apart my prep table. Yes, you just saw that. If you all watch all of my channels, I have a home channel and a vlog channel, then you know that you see this table set up sometimes and sometimes it's not. And that is exactly why I got this table because I wanted a nice place to prep when I do meal preps but I don't always want it sitting in the middle of my kitchen. So this one comes apart really easily. It's from Amazon and I love it for that. So after getting things all cleaned up, I went ahead and pulled out my label maker. I love this label maker because it makes labels that are waterproof, which are perfect for the freezer. And I pulled out my little corn dog bites there as well. And then I went ahead and printed up the labels. And I just like putting the labels on things because it doesn't matter who is cooking the meal up, they can make it and all of the instructions are there. Plus, to be honest with you, when you make a lot of freezer meals, it's really hard sometimes to look at a bag and really know exactly what's in it. So it's just easy to get through my freezer and look at labels and grab what I'm looking for and go. And then to freeze these little corn dog bites, I just let them cool and then I put them all into a gallon bag to freeze.
I am so thrilled with everything I got done today. I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then if you would count the probably two lunches we'll get out of the corn dog bites. So that's maybe like 10, possibly 11 meals that were whipped up. And I get so many questions on how I thaw these out and how I make them. So usually what I do is in the morning, I get out whatever I'm going to make that evening for dinner and I let it sit in the sink and thaw. Obviously you wanna keep track of it so it doesn't get warm. Some people will actually get the meals out the night before and let them thaw in the refrigerator refrigerator so that has more time to thaw out either way however you want to do it if I'm in a really big hurry and I forgot to get it out I do thaw mine in hot water some people don't like doing that you do whatever you think is best for you some people don't like doing that you do whatever is best for you and um, I will do my best to leave either the link for the recipe for these or I'll leave what I put together in the description box as usual. And so once it's thawed out, I just bake it up to whatever the recipe says. Thank you all so much for watching this week's video. I hope it gave you some inspiration. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to check out Skillshare in the description box below. Leave me a comment, that always helps me out. Give this video a like and I'll see you all in my next video.